so we'll do to binary because we're right we're starting from hex this time right so we're over here and we have 0f uh, well I guess actually this was intended as a bit of a gift right because we just found the f0 is uh, you know this block and this block well 0f must just be the reverse so this must be a block of four ones right uh, if you wanted to you could write if you want to go through the official procedure you would say well f gets converted to 15 uh, it's something you just memorized and then 15 you turn into binary and you find that it turns into a block of all ones but since we already know you know that that's you know uh, 15 okay so anyway so uh, so we basically just find that F turns into a block of all ones uh, to get us to our binary code and then the zero just turns into zero or or if we need to pad it out by the eight bits then you know pad it by the uh, right a single a single uh, hexadecimal digit turns into four uh, binary bits uh, and then you stitch them together, right? So what would go uh, here in the binary column would be uh, four zeros, right? So I'll just write it out, one, two, three, four, followed by four ones. Okay, and then we want to turn this into um, uh, decimal. And uh, so to turn this into decimal, well, you know, like, let's maybe, it, I guess it doesn't really matter, you know, yeah, let's just say, uh, you know, like, let's, let's just take the hex code and go straight to decimal. Well, we already know that that's 15, right? The rightmost bit is a pure 15. And then this zero contributes nothing further, right? There, you know, it's effectively just a block, right? You, if you wanted to think about it in the binary, it's a block of a bunch of zeros or whatever. But anyway, it, it's pretty straightforward to think that this is just uh, an additional zero. So n nothing actually is additional. Um, okay, and so then it's just 15, right? So, um, so uh, the F turns into 15 and the zero contributes nothing. So altogether in decimal, it's just 15. Okay, great. Row four. Two binary. Okay. So uh, now we have to see how to convert a decimal number into binary. And I guess, um, you know, again, there's there are a couple algorithms. I suppose the one that I'll go with is um, I think I think maybe just the most intuitive, just right for the sake of it being an intuitive uh, computation, since we're doing this by hand, is just to find the greatest power of two that stays under two fifty. Right, so if you just list out, and it's good to know your powers of two. So if we just list out uh, all the powers of two, then you know uh, two to the zero is one, and two to the one is two, and two to the two is three, and um. Sorry, what am I doing? Uh, his uh, four. Uh, his four. And um, and so, right, so I won't keep writing out the exponents, but so you just double it every time. So double that, you get eight. Double that, you get 16. Double that, you get 32. Double that, you get 64. Double that, you get 128, right? Um, and then I, so where, where are we going, right? I lost where, where my place was, right? We're trying to go to 250. So if you double that, you get what, 256? And if you double that, or, oh, of course, and right, I'm trying to go, right. <laughs> Gotta remember that I have a target and that target is 250. So I don't need 256, right? So we can say uh, that um, this right here, which uh, maybe I should have, uh, uh, 
written the corresponding exponents. Maybe I'll do that now, actually. Maybe it's just worth it. So 2 to the 3 um, equals that, and uh, 2 to the 4 equals that, and 2 to the 5. to the six. Two to the seven. Okay. And so what this kind of demonstrates is that the largest power of two that we need is two to the seven, which means that we need to be eight bits, uh, which is great, right? So uh, uh, we have eight available bits and we need the eighth bit to be a one. So, um, so that uh, maybe if I say that there's a one blank blank, eh, you can't really see the blank. So three, so right, so that would be a block of four and then uh, we're gonna have another bit and one, two, three, right? So so at least right, the, the point here is just to show you the various uh, places where we'll be writing bits. And we know that the leftmost bit is gonna be a one. Okay, now what we need to do in order to uh, 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 compute the rest of the bits is to take 250 minus what we've already accounted for, which is 128. And what is that equal to? So what, I guess that's 130 minus eight, which is um, 122, uh, right? Yeah, 122, right? Uh, gotta, gotta double check myself. Uh -uh. Oh, right, I uh, did not correctly enter the two, but whatever. Okay, so I think that just convinces me that it's 122. Anyway, so that is now the new number to account for. And again, we'll use all of these powers of two that we've uh, listed already and choose the largest one that stays under, and that seems to be two to the six. So I need a two to the six. Well, if this was the two to the seven place, then the two to the six is right next to it. And that also gets a one, right? Because I'm going to take this amount, right? So now that I have accounted for 122 and then further accounted for another 64, then I need to compute this difference. Eh, I don't really like computing. So uh, let's do that, 58. So now we get 58. Uh, okay, so um, now we do it all over again. We find the largest power of two that stays under 58. That would be this power two to the five. That's right next to the two to the six. So that gets a one. We compute 58 minus, uh, uh, what did we say, 32? And uh, what is that? I guess that's 26. And so that's the new number to account for. And so uh, 26, yep, that there's a two to the four, so that's a one. Okay, great. And then 26 uh, minus 16 uh, is equal to 10, right? And I guess uh, that's kind of a gift because we already found that this block of four bits is equal to 10, so we could just uh, shortcut this process and say that it's one zero one zero. Great. So this, especially if I now remove the commas that were supposed to be showing us just the placeholders, then there is the um, binary number. Okay, cool. So now that we have the binary, and it's, it's especially nice to get the binary because it is so easy to take the binary and use it to compute the hex. So um, so two hex, and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this first block of uh, bits, which we already know is represented by F, and this, because we know it's in 10, right, then that block of bits is represented by an A, so it's hexadecimal representation is FA. Okay, 